Welcome to The Necessary Entrepreneur. This week, we welcome ultra runner and 2023's world champion of Big's Backyard Ultra, Harvey Lewis. Big's Backyard is the original backyard ultra invented by Lazarus Lake. For those of you who are unfamiliar, it's a last man standing event. Stick around in the conversation as Harvey talks about the conditions of the event within the first couple minutes. This year, Harvey broke the world record at 108 straight hours, covering 450 miles. We here helped Harvey put together a fundraiser with the goal of reaching $100,000 for the Brighton Center that's right here in Northern Kentucky. The Brighton Center's mission is to create opportunities for individuals and families to reach self-sufficiency through support systems, with some examples including down payment assistance on home purchases, building beds for underprivileged families, and the list goes on and on. We put a link below if you'd like to make a donation. Harvey's a local high school government and financial literacy teacher. He didn't begin running until high school. He was never the first in the pack, but loved to run. It took him 17 years to even qualify for the Boston Marathon, and many years after that to win his first ultra marathon. He put the effort in and just kept grinding. There's also a documentary about Harvey completing the Appalachia Trail with his dad called Like Harvey, Like Son that you can find on Amazon Prime. Harvey says the Appalachia Trail helped build his endurance for Big's Backyard Ultra. He's currently writing a book that details his biggest running secrets due out in 2024. Harvey and I also talked about the mental toughness and all of the finite details it takes to win an ultra marathon like this. Harvey talks about his vegan diet, the camaraderie among runners, falling asleep while running, why wearing the right shoes is important, and my personal favorite, the superpowers within ourselves. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Comment below. And if you'd like to donate to Harvey's fundraiser for the Brighton Center, click the link in the description. I hope you love this one as much as we do. Thanks again. Well, hey, no, no, hey, right, right, that's what it is. Straight that. So, so we're like, he just said live, and we, we gotta go. give a high five. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, it, I, I it, just have to say thank you for oh, embarking man. on this adventure together. So, th- this, this would, you know, th- this was uh, really just uh, such a wild experience that, that we chatted back in December. Uh, we talked about Biggs. You, you heard about my dream of going after this, and you made this uh, <laughs> gallant. Uh, <laughs> Like, uh, just sort of a... But I didn't know I was going to participate in it. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> How'd that and happen? Just, yeah, well, you know, you, you said, let's let's go for it. Let's go for, uh, how about going for $100,000? I thought I said, I think you should. Right I said, Harvey, have you ever <laughs> raised any money? And I don't know if you mentioned that you had raised ten or 12000 before. Anyways, that was like, the most, right? right? That, yeah. And I was like, man... What about this idea of you raising a hundred thousand? If I have to go back and reference it, I said, "What about you raising a hundred thousand yeah, dollars?" I thought it was, uh, how, you know, I bet Harvey, if you, if you, um, I bet you, you know what? I bet you can do. A, I think we can do a hundred thousand. I don't think we was there, but we'll yeah, have to. You're go like, I, 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 I'll, I'll put in five, five thousand. I I'll said get, that. I'll get uh, some you know, of my people. Some of my people. We're, we're gonna get it to happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but I agree. I'm grateful. There's no way I would. Uh, we, where are we at? So we're mid forties. Mid forties. Mid forties. Forty something thousand. That's dollars. outstanding. And, yeah. and and I know, and you know, we're not done with this yet. We're not. So, so, I so mean, we got this a, is so, pretty remarkable. What what's the most you've ever raised at one spot? I've never personally raised that or led up a fundraiser for that amount. That's amazing. Right. We've been in. I've been involved in bigger ones, but nothing that just was a spur of the moment like that. And yeah. so I think it is special. I'll um you know I have fundraising in my soul. I'm a sales guy. Yeah. So I'm always trying to sell something. This just happened. We were selling a fundraiser. To benefit the community, but um, we'll talk it. We'll talk about it a bunch. But the only reason why I came up with it is you were going back to defend a world championship for this thing called Big's Backyard Ultra World Championship. Yes, because uh, you won it in twenty three, or you won it in twenty one. Right, right, right. And do they skip years for individuals? Is that what it is? Yeah. So, just a like kind of maybe give a little like overview for anyone might be checking this out that is not familiar with bigs uh you basically cover a 4.167 mile loop every hour 
Uh, it's 11 hours on the trail, the trail, uh, and then you have 13 hours on the road. And so across every 100 or across every 24 hour period, you're covering 100 miles. And the, the, you can see the, the hills here. I love this, by the way. This, this is awesome. so cool. This, this is, is the actually, first time we've ever uh, had this set up. The live uh, footage mm -hmm. from, from Big's backyard. There's when you're getting ready to start. That, that's right at the start. That's amazing. Um, you know, the French team led by Fabian was just spectacular. And I, I do hope that they're able to somehow, uh, yeah, this is great seeing all the guys. Uh, put this into some documentary, possibly two down the road. Um, but it, it's the, the trail. Yeah, wow, it's so cool to be able to see this. <laughs> the trail is about 40 or 450 feet of climbing every hour, and you have rocks and roots. So you're just doing this little out and back of about 400 meters. Hey, maybe, what are you thinking right now? Uh, just, so we'll jump. So I'm right just, now, it's okay. What are you thinking right now? I'm right there? there in the middle. I'm right. I'm just thinking uh, relaxation. Just, uh, just enjoy this. Take in the, uh, you know, the atmosphere and um, start to get familiar with the the sounds and the sights and taking my senses. Just, just like floating, like a butterfly. You know, like I was, one of my spirit animals was the monarch butterfly. And I actually saw a monarch this first day uh, on the race. And uh, man, that's so cool to see. I've never seen this. Um, that, I, I had uh, Anthony from Quebec came. He ran from Quebec through Cincinnati all the way to Mexico to draw awareness about the monarch butterflies this year. Uh, they've like lost about 90% of their population due to like the habitat loss. And, um, and if you plant milkweed, you can have a, you know, help to like rejuvenate the population. So, so I was just in my mind thinking, okay, you know, somehow these, these little creatures manage to travel all the way from Canada down to Mexico, nearly to Mexico City. I mean, it's, it's a remarkable journey, and I don't know how they do it because they always seem to go like 10 meters this way and three meters that way and yeah. seven meters this way. They're not like going in a straight. And they don't seem durable. Right? They don't, but they're really just, uh, they just find a way to do it. And so, yeah, so for the first day, I kind of had that little thought in my mind. I was just kind of looking at the monarch butterfly and just enjoying the, the sunlight. So I remember yeah. you saying, because you've had so many interviews and articles and stuff, I heard you say that the first day was the toughest first day you've ever had of this race. Yeah. I, is, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I really did. Uh, and uh, it wasn't that it was like uh, I was going to quit or something, um, but in terms of like my, my battery, like my battery was on lower charge that first day than it normally is on the first day. And the reason largely for that, well, there's a couple of things. Like one is that the night before, I only got like three hours of sleep. And I'm usually really good at the psychological element of like just calming my body, just putting myself in a place like this, say like this is a race like any other race. Uh, you know, I don't have to like do anything. I just have to, you know, treat it like any other race. Um, but I just couldn't like calm my mind down. I was just, my mind was like charged, thinking about this and this and that and this. It was just all over the place. I couldn't calm my mind down. I woke up at like 2 a.m. I tried to go back to sleep. I'm just laying there for hours. And uh, so I came in with that and it was just a bit of a busy time leading up to this because my mom moved to Maryland. I was like packing the final things out of her house on Wednesday night. And then we were also engaged in, in like the Brighton Center. So like on one end, it was like fantastic uh, to, to pour energy into this and it's for a cause we both love. Mm -hmm. um, but I also was devoting additional time to that, that element in the last you know, six, seven days prior to the race, you know, in terms of energy, meeting with people, plotting it out, and there's nothing wrong with that but it was also taking a little extra battery to do those sort of things. To do the fundraiser stuff. Yeah. We were so, having media. So I was we wondering if they, like doing this <laughs> ambitious uh, goal of going after $100,000, if actually that, that could actually slightly work against me, you know, because I was putting that extra energy into. But 
ultimately it didn't. Right? Um, of course, no way. They just had the runner up from Germany. Did you hear what happened to him at WAP 81? Uh, is that the guy who forgot I, his time? Yes, I did hear about that, yeah. So Laz is like, uh, Laz would be an amazing teacher, and he was a coach. And like, he, what he does really well is there's, it's only black and white. Like, uh, unfortunately, um, for the German runner, he like left on the loop, and I think he may have got out like five or so minutes, and then he came back five minutes, uh, and he went into his tent to get his timing chip. And the rule is that you cannot come back to your tent to get anything. So I don't know what would have happened. Like, had he just completed the loop and he had forgot his timing chip, they probably would have said, okay, like, you know, we can see other runners saw you do the loop. Um, but unfortunately, because he came back, he got disqualified. And like, it's very difficult, I feel for him. Um, it could happen to any of us. Uh, but, but Laz is, is very like uh, black and white on the rules. And you do kind of need someone that is moderating that doesn't leave any gray area. Like it's, it's difficult, but you kind of need that. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a very difficult situation. But that's the thing, like when you get, you're, you're into running for two, three, four days, and then you, you get to a point where it's, it can be more difficult to like make choices. Uh, and especially the later, the more days we went and into the night, like runners would get more, some runners would get more delirious. So it's, it, it, it has, it, that's one of those things you're, you're always trying to, to like think about not, yeah, all right, I'm not gonna be able, after I've left, I cannot accept anything from my crew member. Or if I come back, and say you're like just really tired and for a moment you forget to cross the, the line and you go directly to your tent. Like that would be, you'd be out if you then grab something in your tent. Like so it's, you have to be, leave some level of like being cognizant of what's happening and being careful too. I noticed that we spent a ton of time here. This was the first time that it was ever streamed live. Right? Well, no. Actually, in 2021, it was. Okay. However, not to this level. Okay. Like, the one in 2021 was, I, I don't know because I didn't watch the whole thing, but I would say probably this had, like, double the amount of, like, um, camera time. And, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, some people think, like, oh, this was not good for the runners. I, the cameras didn't bother me at all. Like, um, to be honest with you, whenever I'd like say, okay, I need to go in the tent, and I just like pull this curtain across, like they totally knew, like they backed off and went away. Um, I did, I'm gonna end up doing, I think about 10 ultras this year. And like, this is the only ultra over where, you know, they have like a live feed like this. And for me, I really liked it because my, you know, Kelly was able to watch. Mm -hmm. My students were able to watch. My parents, um, they were able to be there with me, which was amazing. So I don't have anything, like I, I actually really like this. I mean, it's like also a way for our sport to like, to be seen like in such a way. And, and, and there's times where I do races where like, for example, like the Barkley race, you're running out in the middle of the woods and there's only two specific places that they allow people with cameras and video cameras. Um, they're not allowed in the woods. Or the Canadian death race. The Canadian death race was in Alberta, Canada. And like in that race, there were like cameras in only a couple of spots. It really was difficult to get up into the mountains. I mean, there were a few like photographers, but it was just like photographers, not like live like uh, feeds. So. Uh, from this is like a, something that's come up uh, recently in topic with our with our sport. Um, I think it's actually really. I loved it. I loved that they did this, and it wasn't like over intrusive. Like the the cameras and the videos were predominantly at the camp. They did have drones that were on the road, um, and like once we were into the woods, 
there was like two spots where they had, or three spots maybe where they had a camera that was set up. But really across like uh, four miles to have three cameras set up and then have cameras when you're coming through camp, like that didn't bother me at all. I love the fact that people could like watch it and I wasn't even thinking about the cameras. I was kind of like totally just focused on other stuff. So I really didn't even realize that the cameras were like, I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't realize they were like live feed until like the, I think the third or fourth day. Well, was it was like, following you a little bit. So yeah. the transition, yeah. when it was shrunk down to 10 or 15 runners, maybe even 20, yeah. there was somebody that was running behind you guys at times. Yeah, at that times. That was cool. And I, it didn't bother me. I mean, okay. I kind of like thought, oh, I hope this person doesn't fall because we're going over some like rocks and roots and I'm like, they're carrying a the camera. Um, but yeah, it was like for like 30, 40, 50 meters. You know, it wasn't like a really long duration. And, and it was also typically right in like when you enter the, the woods. Yep. So for me, this is uh, kind of the evolution of running. So I mean, when I first started running ultras like 27 years ago, you know, uh, there might be some like a couple cameras, like that is it. <laughs> I mean, the news might come out and do like a little piece on it, but that, that was it. Like, I mean, this was really uh, pretty awesome that like, I mean, I had people tell me that don't even run, that were watching it in Cincinnati or like uh, people message me on Instagram from like, like, uh, geez, I mean, so many different countries, like different you, countries you, I've not even been to You caused my real estate company to be really inefficient that week. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, I, bet. I heard that a couple of times. Yeah. Um, no, it was, it was neat for us because it did give us a different insight. You didn't just hear about just this. There's a number. I think everybody who talks to you that doesn't know ultras, they hear the details of these races. And then this one about this 4.167 miles every 24 hours. And I think it takes two or three minutes of hearing one of the participants tell us really what that is. And a couple times our brains are like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So you, oh, so you have to run 4.167 miles in an hour. Well, yeah, oh, okay, that doesn't sound terrible. Yeah. Well, but every hour. What do you mean every hour? Well, it doesn't matter when you finish, right? You have to finish it within 60 minutes. If you don't, you're out of the race. And then no matter what time you come in within the 60 minutes, the rest of the hour is what you get for your break, for everything you need to do. Eating, go to the restroom, sleep if you can find 60 seconds. And it's like, well, how long do you do it? Well, until someone quits. What? Yeah, until someone quits. And so what, what's that mean? So to you, this went for four and a half days this time. 108 what you all call loops. How long could you have gone? Yeah, it was, it's hard to say. Like, uh, honestly, we got into a rhythm. I got, I got into a rhythm. It felt like on the, the, the third and the fourth night where it was just like this frequency. Everything just became automatic. And, it, you know, it's not to say it wasn't a struggle. It was a struggle. Uh, but I was able to just hit that 55 minutes, 55 minutes, 55 minutes on the fourth night. And... Um, like my mind was so determined it seemed like it was easy like not it wasn't easy but like in terms of what I was thinking for we we're just going to go through like the fifth night what do you when you looked at your uh, wrist right there yeah I was what, just what checking you, the time so okay, I know so you're, on, so you're on 49 you're on yeah the, so I know exactly what time I should be at that turn that like, was at the uh, three mile turn right yeah I know exactly if I look at the time I know exactly what like that's still like about a mile and I think it's about a mile or so to the finish from there. Yep. But I know what time I'll hit the finish based on like that little turn right there. Yep. I know exactly what time I'm gonna hit the finish when I'm coming around this turn. And so, so if you're a little behind, you step it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, I could, yeah. Um, yeah it's so odd, you got these, all these turns. <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah, uh, so it, it is, um, yeah, it's just really cool to see the camera. How long really. do you think? So you already won it. So yeah, here's so I, I really you, you think that it would have. So. It could have gone. It it definitely could have gone through the night, um, if I just, you know, just hitting like my baseline, everything I had to execute, every lap, 
It could have went through the nights. Which is through 120. It, which would have brought us to like 500 miles. And then it could have gone out to the, to the trail loop again. Which that's a crazy thing. So like, I mean, every time you think, well, used to be like people thought finishing the third day on the trail would be not possible. It would be impossible. And then the idea of finishing a fourth day on the trail seemed impossible. And then we hit, we finished the fifth day on the trail and like that, that seemed like unfathomable. But I, I feel like it's possible if I was, you know, um, continuing with my calories, uh, continuing to like absorb energy. And you see my, my form is in, in good shape. Like my form is good. I had no, no, nothing was injured on my body um, going into that 450 miles except for my ribs. I have bruised my ribs falling down a number of times on the fifth day. <laughs> but here so, you're still good yeah. at 55. So anytime yeah. you see it, like that's the loop down there. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, so you know, the fact that my body, like that was in, the integrity of my body was okay. What did you do this for? At 59, uh, you sprinted out and crushed this loop. Yeah, that was, uh, that was I guess I was getting towards the I just felt like pretty good honestly um, I felt energized <laughs> it's funny to watch all the different changes that's my buddy Antonio he's also vegan from Italy um, so why are you vegan what's no, the vegan thing well, this, this journey and this path and how long ago did it yeah. start and why well out here on bigs um, eating the plant based foods really helped me because I noticed that perhaps maybe as many as like 20% of the field had some upset stomach at one point or another, um, possibly due to like running hundreds of miles, but also due to like, you know, the heat index was over 80 on these uh, sunny days. And like absorbing a lot of calories is not easy for everybody. So like uh, I estimate that I've probably consume something like 400,000 calories, or not 40,000 calories across, that's like the amount of, you know, the, it's like 20 days of food for the average person I ate in four and a half days. So, I mean, I'm always every lap taking in calories, eating, drinking, and eating plant-based, like if you're having dairy, it's harder to digest, or if you're eating meats, it's harder to your body to digest. It takes more like energy to digest. So in these um, trail or ultra sports, it really, it does, in my mind, help you to like with your digestion, but also inflammation. Like I had almost zero inflammation up through the finish of the race. I noticed the next day I sat in the car for like six hours and then like I ran on Friday to Channel 12 and I ran the school. And, I, and that night I noticed like, cause I was on my feet at school, I noticed I did have some inflammation then in my like legs, it was a little more. Um, but during the actual race, I didn't have any inflammation. Like my feet didn't swell, I didn't have inflammation in my like, my like ankles or things like that. And a lot of other runners did. What's up with you not wearing yeah, the shirt kind at of, night? Kind what of what funny. was up with this? I just felt like an animal. <laughs> like in this part right here, I actually felt like an animal. So I was like, I just got in my animalistic self right there. And so that's not butterfly anymore. Uh, no, that's not the that's not the like the monarch had flown away. Is this the honey badger so, animal? What is no, this? no, this was like the Mongolian horse. So the Mongolian horse just have to get into like the spirit animal. Uh, Mongolian horse just never stops. It's like, it's, the Mongolians talk about the Mongolian horse. They, they, they just keep on going all day, all night. There's no stop to them. So, I don't know, I just, I like being out. I didn't wear a light. Like, I like being out in nature. I like hearing the coyotes, looking at the wind. I mean, the, the, uh, the moon was waxing. So every night, it was fun to see. I'm like, man, we're gonna run all the way to that moon is a full moon. Like, these. <laughs> And my buddy Judd is like, he's enticing me. He's like, Harvey, just keep on running. You just gonna wear all these people out. Just keep running back and forth, back and forth. You gotta run them all out. And, but at the same time, I also wanted to collaborate with people. So it wasn't just my mission was to destroy everybody. 
like uh, on the third night, we started running together. Uh, I was running with John Knoll, was a guy from Wisconsin. He was my favorite runner to run with this year. Uh, we had run together previously, like the last couple years, in some, uh, and he's a really strong runner. He actually has uh, the most miles on bigs uh, of anyone but me. Like, um, and then we end up like incorporating a few other runners, and maybe you're gonna see it right here. Yeah, this is us. So uh, we, we finished 300 miles together. You got on the left side, Antonio from Italy. You've got uh, the runner here, he's a special forces from Singapore. The other runners, uh, Jivis from Philippines, and you had a couple runners from Belgium. Uh, it, was, it was cool to do that. And there I am with the shirt I have on right now. So this, this shirt is actually, no, that's, that's a different shirt. Oops. But this is my 200 mile shirt. I always wear this shirt for like 200 miles. Um, in every 100 mile marker, I usually put on a different shirt. Uh, that's like a tropical shirt or something that's sort of festive. Why? Uh, it just kind of lifts your spirits. You know, like it's, it, it definitely like, you, you know, uh, there's something to say like, you know, dressing to an event. Like you, you're gonna like, if you dress up for an interview, you're more likely to sit up in your chair and like act a certain way. So if you, you know, if you embody like the, the adventure, the fun, you just like, this shirt I actually got for like $4 about 10 years ago. I was gonna say, it kind of looks, like, yeah. looks like a thrift store yeah, shirt. It's, <laughs> it's been through a lot. And I tried to give it away, like the guy who, I, who beat me in 2007 from France, Guillaume, I was the assist to him. I tried to give it away to him the next year, but he wouldn't take it, I think. He it's like it your like, Macklemore like shirt. A, you yes. know, like the rapper, he talks about right. like the thrift store song, yes. that's it. So th yeah, this, this shirt has <laughs> significant value to me. Um, I think we are, we're actually auctioning off this shirt over here for the Brighton Center. That's the other tropical shirt I had. Um, so we're gonna do a cool auction. Like, yeah. as we talk about the, the auction, um, I know that Tracy Outwall's helping out with it, right? Yeah. And so he's really running it for us. There's gonna be some shirts. Mike Trimpey, who took this photograph yes. over here, he's just yeah. awesome, right? Yeah, amazing. He's done a lot of stuff with you when you ran the Appalachia Trail. Oh, yes. He's just always there. When it was like Harvey Like Sun. Absolutely. That had to be cool, man. I don't think we talked a ton about that last time when you were on to something. The documentary? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, that that was, so you, you had uh, a documentary that documented the path of you and your dad. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, it's on Amazon Prime right now, and it was, it was a, a real priceless experience i mean i couldn't ask for any anything different a chance to join my father and uh we 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 lived in different states when i was growing up i mean um it, we didn't get to as much time as we loved to spend with each other so he, he was a fantastic uh crew crew partner on the appalachian trail like, i mean he, problem solver good attitude uh making humor of me <laughs> teasing me about stuff so it was fun. Was that 50 something days running the Appalachian It was, Trail? we did it right under 50 days. But like that adventure actually, it helped me with this race because um, that, that event, you, you basically are going from like before sunrise, sometimes 6 a.m., 5.45 a.m. to sunset, 9.30. Sometimes we went to midnight and then you wake up the next day and you go again. So like there is no stop. Your, your breaks are for like as short as you can make it, maybe eight or 10 minutes, like uh, a few times throughout the day where you're stopping for meals. Uh, so you're just nonstop, you're going, you're tired and you keep going. So like having had that experience on the Appalachian Trail for 50 days definitely helped me for this race because it's like, uh, it's unrelenting like there's it's not like you're there's no stop no one knows how long the race will go to uh, you just have to keep on moving keep moving forward um, there were some really cool things I have to share that I think I already mentioned it to you before and this is at right over 300 um, actually it's above 300 we're at 400 400 miles wow 400 miles yeah, but you see my basic form is still like staying intact. It's good, you, you always think about your form is really important. So like, I kind of think of myself as like an aircraft. I'm always like a pilot. I'm checking with my like systems, like how's my form? So I'm thinking about my form, what, you know, how's my fueling? 
you know, things like that are always running through my mind, as well as the pace, like how quickly we're moving. Uh, you can see like so there. So six of you left there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You can see like certain people look. I look kind of rough. Yeah, did you almost fall? Yeah, I, 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 looking probably, <laughs> I probably did look like I almost fell. That was, this is 108. And What's going on this here? This is uh, where Ihor is uh, coming back. His foot was bothering him. And you could kind of see it right there. Uh, but he did a really good job of disguising that. I had no idea his foot was bothering him. I didn't even know that until after the race. So I know that um, that was something that his, he actually had some um, – he had a phenomenal race. I mean, Ihor has been running for, I think, maybe like four years in ultras. And he was just such an amazing uh, competitor. So, I mean, it was just, a, a, he, he, I didn't, I really didn't think he was ready to stop. Um, when I was running out that loop, I actually ran, I hit the midpoint, I think about 21 or 22 minutes, uh, which was pretty quick. And then I turned around and I didn't see Ihor. So then I knew it was like maybe as high as 85% chance I won the race if I finished the loop. And I had to go about a half a mile and make a turn and I didn't see him again. And I thought, well, geez, that's about 95% chance. And there was one more hill I had to come up over. And I came up over that and I was like, wow, he was not anywhere to be seen. And I knew all that I had to do then was finish the loop. And I just like, I, I literally was, man, just, it was like the sweetest, like, like uh, feeling to have a dream and then have it come to fruition like that. Just with the odds being so against like the improbability just because there were 75 phenomenal runners and some of these you know runners were so talented and so strong mentally and physically uh it took a lot to be the final person in this type of event so i had to actually like say a prayer um you know of, of, of gratitude and uh feel a connection with other people even that I know around the world and in the US like even before I got back here I was just thinking to them and just being grateful as well as to yourself and like to the Brighton Center like I mean I was just like wow that is just so crazy that this actually is going to come true like we 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 dreamed uh, and then I just took my time on the way back and I kind of like savored the the sky the the sun was setting um just the senses and then just took my time back in the camp and then just to see everyone was like just so nice so 27 27 years ago when yeah. you started doing ultras here's what I think about like, what would I ask Harvey if I didn't get to know him? I'm like, why does someone do this? And <laughs> so then I went, why does he run? Why do you run? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have, like, I could write a book about why I run. Like, I, I, I really love running. Uh, I love, like, the elevated heart rate. To me, it's like dancing. But I also love, like, connecting with people. Like a lot of these races create opportunities to connect with people. I also love just being out in nature. So, I mean, I feel most alive when I'm out doing an event like this, even more than like my typical daily and weekly schedule. Like I feel like just alive. I feel like, like the wild animal me comes out with, with no shirt on. I wasn't trying to show off or anything. I just felt like, wild like I just felt like wild animal I've got no light I like running in like the dark I've been running for four days and it's like I just feel like connected with nature like it's like so cool to just connect with nature like that and, it, and it's wild that like human beings we've been uh, evolved from you know the, this this we, this is part of our DNA this ability to we can run further than any animal on the planet. Uh, 
in terms of like mammals or you know it's like uh, we're not as fast as a cheetah we're not like you know gonna fly like those albatross birds across the sea um, but we can run for literally days and like you know that that's part of our uniqueness as a, a species like the, that are that we have that in our our DNA to be able to do that it's kind of amazing when you think about the migration of humans and how we had to survive before the technology that we have in the modern day and like just how we were so much more connected to the to the planet I mean even when I'm out here outdoors you know I start to listen to things more acutely like the birds or I start to pay more attention to like the stars and like when I'm in my house and my daily schedule I get disconnected from like the stars I get a little bit more disconnected from nature but being out here is really just uh, feeling more connected with the planet and the universe it sounds like it, it, it just does that for me I'll... do you do you remember when you first started taking running serious do you remember that yeah I mean honestly I guess I sort of started taking running serious in seventh or eighth grade. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I didn't, I did, uh, I, I went out for football and I was like fourth, third or fourth, third string defensive tackle. <laughs> and I was a bigger guy then, th back then. Um, but I like really enjoyed the physical element of the challenge. And so I liked running laps, even though I was nowhere near like the front of the pack. And so I went out for a track and I, we had a regimen of like running two miles every day. So I'd run a mile out, mile back. And so, I mean, I, I think that I kind of took it serious back then. Like I would go to all the practices, but I just didn't have the formula. Like I was inconsistent. I'd only train during that season. I didn't do cross country or swimming or any other sports. I was just inconsistent. And in high school, again, I did that. Um, I always, to me, it was always serious, <laughs> even though I was finishing in the back of the group. Third string. Third string, <laughs> even though when I was like doing track in high school and I was like, I never scored for the team across the whole four years. Uh, I ran like the marathon. I went out and ran the marathon on a whim. Uh, and and um, I, like, I finished in like over five hours. I was very serious about that. <laughs> Like, so for me, that was very Told serious. Told everybody how great it was. Yeah, right? I was yeah. like, that, that meant a lot to me. Uh, it took me five years to break the five hours of the marathon, and then it took me- How many years? years five years to five break years. five hours. And then it took me, uh, I think, 17 years to, to qualify for Boston. Which is under so, what, three and a half or four? No, at that time, it was like under three hours and 10 minutes, like when I first qualified. 17 years of running. It took me 17 years to qualify for Boston, which is, is funny, <laughs> just because it's, it's not funny. It's, it's, it's really kind of cool. Um, but most people qualify a lot quicker than that. And then to have go from like each of these stages to continuously get better. So we're like, now I could totally crush, like, yeah, I could get into Boston Marathons, no problem. Like, it's like, um, yeah, I should be able to run like a, a yeah, so run like that, seven and a half, is that a seven and a half minute mile? Uh, honestly, it's more like probably seven ten or, or yeah seven like back when I qualified first, it was like right under seven ten per mile. I mean that's a pace. good pace. It was pretty good pace, but you know it's just wild that like uh, just just continuously. I like one of my favorite movies is Shawshank's Redemption. Mm. So it's like I love that that the the scene of him just you know going through the the like half or the, the 800 meters mm -hmm. of like you know just sewage yeah you know and, and emerging on the other side yeah and so like i certainly didn't have any hardships like 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 the shawshanks but you know like i kind of like looking at it that i i was way in the back and like no one ever pictured this from my background knowing me back in like high school or even my early 20s or maybe my 30s, you know, and it's just, um, I, I did this with like, just continually uh, loving what I was passionate about and like just working really hard at it. Like that was it. So you've finished, this is Eeyore. So yeah. you're still, you're about to win. 
but you've been in this spot. Yes, yeah, I've been in that in I horse spot. Um, I've been in a spot like let's see, I think three times at Biggs. So I, I definitely know his his feelings. What's well, that, I mean, I don't know like? his feelings. But what, I, what did it I, feel I, like when you were in that spot? Well, honestly, Second place. I, I didn't feel too bad about it. I think he also embraced it very positively because it's like he made it 445.8 some miles. 833 miles, I mean, miles, that's yeah. just remarkable. So, I mean, um, and, you know, maybe he could have went uh, further, um, <coughs> but he could have also injured his foot and not been able to run for, like, you know, some pe- long period of time. So, I mean, it's just, uh, I think there's, that's a totally um, what'd you amazing feel? feat. Yeah, but, but what would you feel? Well, my first time doing it, actually, I felt like um, I was ready to get back to work. <laughs> so I had to, I was thinking, I got to go back to work. And I'm like, the race went a lot further than we anticipated. So um, I, had, I had a lot more left in me at that first bigs, which was kind of wild because we had, like, kind of surpassed the expectations of like the record at that point was 200 miles and like we went to like 241 and game went to like 246 um but uh it just I, I i just mentally gave up so it was a great um i learned a lot about the mind and the body so like that time my mind went gave up like i gave up mentally i said i don't really want to do this for a whole nother night you know, even though I could have done it, like in hindsight, I 100% could have kept going. But mentally, I was like, I'm done. Like, this is, this is good. I have to get back to work the next day. I, 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 I'm happy. This is, I'm content with this. And like then the other time was with uh, Courtney in uh, 2020. And again, that was a time where I mentally gave up. Like we, we, you know, we, we did really outstanding. Um, and it was going, I think it was somewhere around mile 280. And I just like mentally gave up. I like went out like about maybe 50 meters, 100 meters. And I turned around. And I saw like, okay, this is good. I mean, I started to have like a little bit of hallucination, but minor. It was like just nothing that you sound. didn't deal with in this race. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like um, honestly, I didn't have that, I didn't have any hallucination in this race. Um, I had like definitely I had times where I was like would fall asleep while I was running on the fourth night and I had times where my 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 brain would just turn off like wait a I would minute li- hold on yeah what yeah I would literally fall asleep while I was running it was strange like I don't know if I've ever done that before but I've never stayed up for like four nights in a row because I mean the first three nights I was just like laying there I mean the first night I would I actually got like eight minutes because I was doing the laps faster where I would just lay there with my eyes shut for eight minutes. I wouldn't fall asleep. Again, my mind was going, and I just couldn't fall asleep. But I think there's some value to just resting and having your eyes shut. Like, there's 100% like, power to that. You don't have to just be sleeping. You can also gain, gain like, a lot of benefit from that. But the fourth night, I was so tired. I was literally just running, and I would fall asleep, and then I'd, like, kick the ground unusually and I wake myself up. So it was like, I, was, I didn't fall down. I would still be kind of in stride. It was strange. I mean, I, I'd also have like my, my, my brain would sort of go into like a sort of dreamlike state. Um, kind of a, it seemed like a, uh, a hybrid between like awake and sleep mode. And I would just start like randomly saying like things that make no sense. And the guy running next to me, John, would just be like, Harvey, what are you talking about? And I would be like, oh, never mind, never mind. So then I'd start filtering and try to like filter what I was going to say to him. And there was actually another runner on that fourth night that was super incoherent. Like he would fall back 100 meters and like he'd catch up to us. And he would just, he was just like, it seemed like a whole nother planet. Like even like when he'd catch up with us. He made no sense whatsoever. So it was like so comedy hour on the... It was sort of comical. I mean, no one's getting injured, but it was like comical, like seeing this. I'm like, this is... It sounds like the man is like literally really drunk. Like, as he is making no sense whatsoever. So yeah. they see your light. You had a light on you at this moment, right? 
you, you know what? I, I don't think I did, actually. I, John, who was next to me, had a light. Uh-huh. Uh, again, I was running, even in the fourth night when I was no, falling this is asleep. It. This is your last lap. Oh, no, it's not. It's not? No, I don't think. Oh, it no, you know. Okay, it is. How about that? I guess I did have a he my, must have, John must have my said, man. My fifth night, okay. I did have a light. He's so like, I had a light. Yeah. So apparently I did have a light. Because you only went out. Night. This was the first lap of yeah, the Yeah, that's, that's funny. Right. Right. Oh, look, there's a dog there. Is that a dog? Yeah, yeah. That's not little either. That was your first. Uh, that was your uh, first. That's fan my welcome of, yeah. committee. <laughs> Get a dog. That's great. Uh, there you are uh, from the drone. Okay. Right. How about that? Okay. Yeah. See, I don't think I have a light on. I think it's, no. Do I? Someone else has a light on me. See yeah. that? I don't have a light on. You're just coming in. Okay. I'm so coming someone in. Else. I'm totally dark. Yeah. I, I'm like. So hey, there's so like, there's cars on that road at times, right? When you guys are running. Yeah. I noticed that from the drone. I'm like, that is not safe at night. Well, honestly, um, the number of cars we had at nighttime was super like low. Like, I mean, I feel like we had like maybe, maybe three or four cars all night long. Okay. And whenever there was a car, like we would all speak to one another. So we'd be like, "Hey, car back! Yo, okay. move out of the road! Come okay. on!" Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot of talking that was happening. Mm-hmm. We were all watching out for each other. The number of cars were, was very few. Like, I mean, across a night, you might see a couple, two so or this, three. So this course for Laz's Farm, this is south of Nashville, right? It is uh, east. It's east, southeast, yeah. yeah. Um, is he the guy, did he come up with the first, like, backyard ultra? Yeah, yeah, he actually dreamed this up 50 years ago when he was, like, a teenager in high school. And so... Why'd you make him wait so long? <laughs> yeah, I wanted to just kind of savor the moment. I was trying to savor the time. Yeah, Did it I really, feel like you were savoring it? Absolutely, yeah. Like, I'm in no rush. I'm like, uh, I just... Uh, this was I have no idea if this sort of thing will ever happen again in life. So I'm just like, I've got to just, you know, take in the moment, not rush through it. You know, just um, appreciate everyone who's there. You think they're wondering, like, is he going to come back? <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah, they might, might they have been. They look pretty patient, right? right? They do. Like, see, that's You're 43, 43 in. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it's kind of wild. So you probably have another eight or nine minutes to go before you're uh, in, right? Yeah, I think so, about eight or nine minutes. Um, but, yeah, it, it just was a, a surreal experience. Like, I mean... The, the field was really strong, and you could see that I, I did actually kind of have to push really hard. <laughs> You're like, by my battered self over here, I look a little yeah. beat up. The, the fifth day, I definitely like had fallen a bunch of times, um, which, you know, it, it, I, I remember Ihor was like about 50 meters in front of me. He looked back, I'm like, no, go ahead, I'm fine, I'm fine, all, all is good. He's probably just like, damn, Harvey, how many times you got to fall and just keep on getting up? What's going on here? So you, fell a uh, lot. you fell a lot on the last couple. I, not on the last, like the last loop, I didn't fall at all. I switched shoes and I just felt really good and I didn't fall at all. Um, the two laps before that, I fell a bunch of times and... Um, you just and forgot I, to switch shoes. I, I, well, I thought there was something to do with my like sensory depth perception um, but you know, it, it, I, it, it, one of the things I just remember is like, I remember falling down and like, just like being, my face was like planted against the dirt. Fortunately, like I'm pretty good at falling. So I like just kind of roll <laughs> or like roll with it. And like, I, I didn't hit any rocks, which was amazing, but I could just remember my face was like on the ground, like, you know, for a milliseconds. And I'm just like, I am not going to stop here. I'm not going to let this finish like this. My face on the dirt. I am going to get up and we're going to get this. We're going to do this. We are not, we did not come here to stop right now. Where'd you no learn, way. Where'd you and I had that happen like, like yeah. a lot of times in that race. Like um, there was another time in the fourth day where if I don't know if any of the other runners remember, but I started like sound a little bit like David Goggins. <laughs> I was like using all sorts of profanity when people were not around me. I'm like, you know, I'm just getting myself psyched up. And um, profanity? A little Harvey bit. Was, what yeah, would your students know, think about I you? Know, you know, it was, was, there was nobody but the trees around <laughs> and, and uh, the birds. 
Uh, but yeah, I it it was this was a a really incredible experience. Like just it was uh, an absolute like pushing of the will, and uh, you know the, the wild thing is is once we finish. There was like about an hour, maybe 45 minutes where I was talking on camera and then we were taking pictures. And then after about an hour, like um, I, I did not want to go to any hotel. Like I was totally cool about just going to our tent right there. Like to me, that was like the beach. I was like so happy about that. Had a bed in there. Yo, I'm just grateful. It was so good. Um, yo, but at that point, it's like I needed some collaboration to get to the tent. But right here, when my body is warmed up, I felt like I could go all night long. So it's, it's very amazing. Like my brain, my mind is all right, devoted. you're coming in. You're coming yeah, in. This is it. You're coming in. Yeah, it's... Uh, dream it was a dream so many times we made that turn with so many people <laughs> ah that's wild it's the first time i'm seeing this that's great thanks you gonna stop it? You stop it? No, you, you yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to. That feeling. Yeah, that was, um, there's no mountain there, but there was a big mountain there. Like, for me, that was a giant mountain that I was like looking out across right at that moment. Like, some mountain that is not even, you can't even imagine how, how tall the mountain was, but it was a giant mountain. And I heard that was such a, that meant a lot when he was there. And he, he was such a great, he had such great sportsmanship right there, uh, congratulating me. And what, I mean, just what a amazing young man. Uh, so I'm, I was grateful. I'm like a little beat up. <laughs> I'm like a little beat up. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was a, a, a definite like dream. It's a heck of a smile. Yeah, yeah. so I, I look a little beat up there. You know, the funny thing is, I I, I look like I've got a lot of facial stubble. <laughs> like I'm, was I've got dirt? like some beard that was not there when I started that race. So like I was totally clean shaven, you know, down here, um, but not at the end. So we had run a, a long enough that I was starting to grow a beard. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Do you want to run this far again? You know, the funny thing is, is I. Uh, I got like a ridiculous, um, it was my buddy, Judd. I, I got some mental issues because of course I do, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um, you know, but like, yeah. Laz is like, uh, well. Hey, he, get your, he, you he, brought he, that I, with I you. I actually did. Right? So that is uh, the, um, Laz is the last person standing, uh, coin here and it's it's pretty cool so you got basically there every runner got a coin but there's only one of these and it says uh, one more one more loop never give up be your own hero it's it's uh, easy until it's it's not and on the back side, uh, it's got Big's Backyard Ultra Individual and uh, 2023. Yeah. So there you go. Is this real gold? Uh, he didn't no. go cheap on us, did, we, <laughs> did he? You know, to me, it's, it's, it's worth, uh, in terms of symbol, symbol, symbolism, is worth more than, you know, any type of gold. But... Um, so do you and, think, so Laz probably, these are his statements. Yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. The yeah. And then this is his dog. The, mm -hmm. the race is named after big. Uh, so his dog was just a remarkable 
a, a, a remarkable like animal. Uh, you know, Laz actually found Big in, on on his property in the front of his yard. He had been shot like and left to die, and like uh, Laz like took him to the vet. He, they thought he was going to die. He survived. Um, Big went on to live to be like 16 years of age, which is really lo- like a long time for a pit bull to live. Most pit bulls don't live beyond like, you know, 10 years of age. Um, but he was always a great dog and by Laz's side. So, uh, so on here it says, be your own hero. Yeah. Um, I remember, I think in December, I said, do you have any heroes? I think we were sitting right here. And we kind of talked about it, and everybody kind of has their royal plate. But it's like, be your own hero. I I love that statement. I do. Yeah. 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 Cause, that's that's because I'm not really starstruck by anybody. I don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah. But like no one. Yeah. There's no yeah. one I'm starstruck, and I don't think yeah. you're that guy either, right? You're no, not no, I'm not by really. I mean, I do really admire like uh, certain people and their what they've been able to do. So I mean, like. You know, Muhammad Ali is one of my favorite, you know, sports figures of all time because he was able to not only be incredible in arena, but he was able to transcend that and like impact the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, you know, with with his uh, efforts with the civil rights movement and like just his presence and what he brought to the to the world with his positive, like wild <laughs> so poetry. A, so you're a quiet Anarchist inside. Anarchist? Oh, I'm definitely not an anarchist. You know, like, I definitely, like, I love the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> so, being a <laughs> teaching government, I mean, I'm all about the U.S. Constitution. Um, but it was anarchy us creating that. Uh, yeah, well, it was the Enlightenment period, you know, like, mm-hmm. all the, the forces converging and, and uh, yeah, I mean, and it's been an evolution. Like, I mm-hmm. don't, you know, of course, like our nation's uh, greater today due to those uh, challenges and the growth from those movements. Mm-hmm. Um, 1787, right? Is that correct? What's 1787? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. when the U.S. Constitution is. Isn't that to. wild? That's just 240 years ago. Yeah, but it's the oldest constitution on the planet. Yeah, isn't not. that wild? Yeah, yeah, it's not that far back. Or hmm. when you think about things like uh, the civil rights movement, I mean, that's. Seems like an attorney ago, but it's just really, years ago. It's not that far back. You yeah. know, it's not that far back. What do you think? Do you have deep thoughts? So if if from 1787 till now, we'll read all the history books, if that's 200 and whatever, 40-something years or 30-something years, what do you think we're going to... Are we still in two, another 230 years? If you yeah. had to document what the world was going to be like in the United States, what would you project? And that's a really difficult question, but I mean, I kind of believe in the, the overall good of humanity, which is difficult right now, especially seeing what's happening in, in Ukraine and also with Palestine and Israel right now. It's, uh, it's Armenia, it's, 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 Azerbaijan. And also like the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, you see these people working, uh, you know, for pennies to- So we, can, know, so we can have these. Because we have our cell phones. No. Yeah, so I mean, it, there's a lot of darkness in the world, but there's also a lot of light. And I mean, like just this event here, you you had all these runners from 40 countries, and uh, it was so much more of a powerful event, having the different nationalities and the richness of that diversity there. I mean, we, we need even more diversity. Um, you know, with Biggs, we've actually had two female winners in the last uh, five years, which is so incredible. Uh, you know, women uh, can perform as greatly as men um, because in these longer events, it becomes down to the mind even more than the body. So, like, not to say that women can't push their bodies to almost the same degree as men. They, they have proven themselves to do so. Um, but uh, we, we do need more women because we only had like five women competing in this world championship race. Mm-hmm. My dad told me last night um, that uh, he lives in St. Paul, Minnesota. 
um, for the first time in St. Paul history, it's a all seven female uh, city council. So they've got seven women, all under 40, and also very racially diverse. So it's like of the city council. So it's pretty amazing that you know we've we've seen those strides in 60 years. And you're and you're a government teacher. You teach uh, high school kids, right? Yeah, yeah. So we start talking about a race, one right. of the best ultra marathons in the world. But here's my question: Do you think that they'll make us act better? They'll make what? Do you think they'll make us act better? Oh, seven women. Oh yeah, city council people probably. Or, or do, but <laughs> so I, that's what that's the question: Is would yeah. they make us treat each other better? Yeah. Or are we just these crazy humans? Like you see the good in humanity. Yeah. But even when you choose to see the good, there's a lot of craziness going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, you, I, I, I mean, it's just like when I did that that event across the Appalachian Trail. Um, it, one of the best aspects of it were the encounters I had with strangers every day and the trail magic of people generously bringing out, you know, food for us. Just this evening, my neighbor, you know, she made us vegan cookies. I brought over you here. You forced had, it on us. You, you forced know, it, it the vegan cookies. They, they, they were awesome. They were incredible. Yes, they right? were awesome. And she mm-hmm. made me like some uh, amazing uh, vegan uh, lentil curry. Um, you know, people are, there are way more people in this planet that mm-hmm. have good intention. And like, that's the thing I've, I've met some really, I've been fortunate enough to travel to like 103 countries and on my travels, I, I, I've, I've had some bad encounters once in a blue moon, but almost always I have these amazing encounters with people from all the different nationalities, all the different religions and all the different racial backgrounds and ethnicities you can imagine. Uh, and it's like we all as a, as, a, as a human race have far more in common with another. Uh, so that you know, 240 years from now is a, a long ways to predict. Um, but you know, I, I'm still very optimistic that, you know, that the, the, the people, like the people in the Brighton Center that we mm-hmm. you know, worked uh, to mm-hmm. fundraise for. Mm-hmm. And we're not done. Uh, we're not done. Right. Um, the people out there, uh, you know, there's, there's far more good than there is evil. And like ultimately the, the good will, will like triumph over, over the evil in my mind. But that's just the way I envision it. It's like a battle in this world all the time. All the time. It's yeah. all the time. It's like good against evil. Yeah. It and is so far, time. a lot of good has won out. But yeah, I don't know. We could, we could go in depth on that, right? Yeah. It, it, it's wild what's going on. Um, what felt different in 2023 at Biggs versus 2021? Yeah. Well, just like I said, the first few days, I felt like that... I was not allowing myself to think anything other than being the last person standing, but I knew physically I was drawing more energy out of the battery. So like the idea of like, and it's wild because in 2022, uh, we had our team um, event and where that's like a satellite race where they, they have the backyard is com- competing um, in different countries all simultaneously. And, and so there's, a field in the US that's made up of 15 members. There's a field in Belgium made up of 15 members and then 45 other countries. And I made it to like 312 miles and I like bowed out as the assist to Piotr. Um, but I wonder if like I mentally you know, gave myself permission to bow out, even though I felt like I was bowing out like uh, legitimately um, on physical grounds, like I, I, you know, I discovered more in this race about my um, engine and where I could go. And like I said at the end, like I really felt I was dialed into that I could have just kept going through that whole other night. And I don't know how much further I could have gone beyond that, but I felt like I had like committed myself mentally to such a degree that I was not um, ready to stop. Like I was not 
like I, I was very um, committed to this the 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 frequency I was on. <laughs> could we do could we do that with anything in life? Yes, but you really have to have a why. So like the why is so important. Uh, you know, we tried to add to that why with like this, um, you know, the Brighton Center and raising funds and, and, it, and it did add a, a level to it. Um, but I feel like you really have to have a why and then you have to have a formula. So, I mean, you, you can't be just spinning your wheels. Uh, you really have to have like a, a, a plan in place. If you have a, a, a why, you have a plan and then you have the conviction to follow through then the answer is most definitely you can do whatever I feel is that you want to pursue. If you want to like send, uh, you want to travel with space shuttles to, to Mars and beyond, it's, it's humanly possible. If you want to like be a billionaire, it's a push, but it might be possible. You know, it's like whatever your drive is, you could probably push to the nth degree to get to that place. You know, so... Um, I also I like I, I did like I did kind of joke around with myself a little bit. Well, I don't know if it was joking around. Like I, um, like in the second, in the f- maybe in the first few days, I would kind of like um, it's kind of bad, <laughs> but I would. Are you like, gonna make us cut this out? No, no, maybe not. We're gonna, <laughs> no. we're gonna allow us to leave. No, this no, in. no. So okay, <laughs> so there was a lady um, out on. Th- uh, let's see, was it Thursday? Uh, yeah, Thursday, Kelly came to visit before the race. Um, so like the next day before the race. And I, we went out gr- grocery shopping at Whole Foods. And I mean, I loaded up like it was like for the biggest holiday party you can dream of. I ended up spending like $450 at, at Whole Foods. <laughs> I had massive amounts of food. I almost ate all of it too, <laughs> which is hilarious. Very nice. But there was an old lady back in this um back near the like the the plant-based milk aisle and she had this cute hat on and she was by herself and i was like um you know sometimes when i see older people like that in a grocery store i think about my mom and like i i think that about older people in our country that are lonely so i was like i said hi to her and we kind of like chit chatted a little moment and i told her i really liked her hat and she said thank you and then we, I went on, I was grocery shopping, and I was like at the line checking out with all the, all the groceries with Kelly, and the lady like looked over at me, and she's like, are you an X-Man? Because <laughs> I have my two times you like, like jacket on, it's got the big X and stuff, I was like, well, kind of. <laughs> and so, so then I was out in the loop um, in the daytime, like, uh, and maybe it was the first couple of days, and like I literally like um, put myself in my imagination. I like literally was like, hey, I'm like Wolverine, and all these runners are all done. They have no idea. They're all done. They're there's no mentally. Way. You said that. Yeah, mentally. I They're said done. That. And I just like laughed to myself. But I was serious about it. Like I'm like, they're all done. Like every one of them. <laughs> so they have no idea what's coming. It was bad, but I didn't have Did you that. tell any of them? No, 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 no. I was like, kept that to myself. But I was like, it's coming. Like Wolverine. But then I'd have, a, you know, so it was my creative mind. I, you, you have enough days out there. So then like one of my other favorite movies is um, Unbreakable. Mm. So I think about like uh, David Dunn mm. and his character with Bruce Willis. I'm like, the running sort of in some ways kind of reminds me of the weightlifting. And I'm like, you know, I feel like as humans, we have like sort of superpowers within ourselves to do things when we're driven to like some level that is uh, an exponential that we cannot like quantify. So like if you had like uh, some family member that was trapped under a car, I don't know, maybe would it be possible you could push the car like way more than you ever could have on a normal day because you were trying to save a family member. So I don't know, but like for me, like that's kind of like the mindset sometimes I would jump into. Like I would put myself into like the mindset of like, okay, I'm just like this character David Dunn, I'm just running these laps and like, I'm not gonna stop. Like it's just gonna keep on going. 
So you might think I'm a little crazy by these things, but, well, well, here's but they're I'm, actually real. Yeah. They, they, like I would, I would have fun like you know playing around my mind like with that too. You have to because if you think four and a half days, like if we go through a normal week in our life, that's a full week, a work week, five yeah, days. Yeah. Think about all the things that we accomplish and do and people we, in five days. That's a yeah, lot so, of living. It's a lot of times the sun going yes. down, sun coming up. All to yourself. And sleeping, all that. Like, So it, it is kind of funny. Like People would be like, uh, talking about how they, they got a little less productive at work. you know. Yeah, I'm not happy about it, okay? <laughs> I'm glad we could raise all this money, but I'm not happy about like, it. I still have bruised ribs, man. So you're making me like laugh here. It kind of hurt my ribs. Um, what would your doctor, what does your doctor say to you? Well... Uh, Honestly, I, I only like really go to a dermatologist. Like I don't really, I should go, I haven't been to a doctor for a little while, but I don't advise that for people. Okay. I just don't like, I don't what have, would any, your, what I don't do you have think, any medical issues. What do you so. think your doctor would say to you? Uh, well, um, you know, it, my dermatologist, he, he's always like very intrigued. You know, I've had really great doctors. They're always very supportive of me. So, I mean, I kind of feel like it's important to have doctors that are, that uh, you have are supportive of you. I mean, if I was doing something like destructive, like doing this every week, mm-hmm. you know, a few times a year, no problem. <laughs> That's okay. This is every week might be a little over the top. Um, but yeah, I've I've had really really good doctors. So they've given you positive reinforcement about it. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. They, 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 the last doctor I had, she she retired, but she was a, ru- a runner as well. Because she couldn't make any money off of you. <laughs> so, no, she was she was fantastic. So yeah. if they give you positive vibes and positive reinforcement, and they say, "Good job, Harvey. Like, keep doing this. It's going to be longevity and a good life." What would they say to me? Because I'm I not a runner, I, Harvey. That's and, all right. I mean, I think you you do a good job. You're not like you uh-huh. know obese. You like take care of yourself. I mean, one of the th- things I'd really love to connect with people um, from this, it, it, from my running, my what I'm doing, is to, you know, f- just be active. Like, I mean, I feel like that's really important for your mental health, and just finding 20 or 30 minutes a day, whether it's like walking outdoors with a coworker. In fact, what I would suggest, like for you, is to hold your meetings like like at least a couple days a week, hold meetings where you actually are just walking on the meeting. Like that would be brilliant because it would be good for everyone on the team. And like if you look at um, the brain, like you can actually activate like the brain in even a stronger way by doing some motion while you're, while you're like conversating. Uh, you can like be even more productive. So I would love to like get, if I had a way to like get uh, you know, the whole country moving and like moving for 20 or 30 minutes a day. Wow. Like that would like really like impact our, our national debt. So am I going like, to be like, yeah. should I be the tour guide? You know how you go on a tour and you can put the headset on because yeah. if there's like 50 or 60 people and you walk around and you hear the tour guide talking about the thing, do I need to like take everybody to a track? Cause there's a hundred yeah. and something people that could show up to my meetings. Yeah. Yeah. That's so kind of like, tough. Uh, that would be pretty we're incredible. Going for, we're going for a walk. Well, you know, that'd be pretty incredible. I mean, honestly, being creative is how you get to the highest peaks. Like mm-hmm. I feel like when you can in, in, in like incite your creative side, like, I mean, you then can have growth, uh, exponential growth. So, I mean, if you start doing stuff like that, then people around town are going to be like, what, who is this pivot realty guy? Mark, what in the world is wrong with you? What are you doing? I, listen, and Harvey like, just you, told me like, to be crazy like him. Then it's like all of a sudden you start having like fewer like uh, sick days from your staff. People are more like uh, feeling more like a team element. Um, people start feeling more energy. They already feel like, that. Yeah, they already feel that. So they could be off the, the, the roof. <laughs> Yeah. Like you better be careful with that. Like don't don't start doing that. People are gonna like you're, you're you're gonna even get more productivity. Okay, we don't want that, right? Yeah, no, no. Be um, careful, but but no, seriously though, no, I really do. Creativeness. Try, like try to. I, I feel like it's really important for people to, to like, mentally. Uh, it's huge for me. Like if I if I were to go like days without doing anything active, like I think I would feel a lot more. 
of that um, like negative energy that I sometimes you know, would would absorb from like other factors that I can like dissipate and like throw off by just doing like the active stuff. Like I, I usually don't carry that stuff with me and I feel like that's largely because of doing the act, active like stuff. So like just even the week before you went to uh, a couple more things here, but just to, the week before you went down to Biggs, we, we did this media campaign stuff. We were interviewing, we were talking to people, but you also a few days before you flew to Atlanta, right? To go to, yeah. it was all day running sponsored it, right? You have a good friend, Jesse, right? And Jesse Itzler, yeah. and it is all day running company, right? Yeah. And so, you even three or four days before this race, you flew down to be a part of that, to be around those people, and to be around yeah. energy and stuff, right? Yeah. So it like was a Running Man festival. Yes, you're living it. You're living yeah. this idea. Yeah. And, well, and I thought about like even that. Like I did a lot of things before the start of this race. I mean, yeah. you and I first plugged in the Brighton Center and really got that whole mapped out thing mapped out. Like literally two oh, weeks like 10 days before the event. Yep. And then I went down to Atlanta, like on Tuesday, like I don't, most people wouldn't do that (laughs) kind of thing. Uh, So I was taking a risk with that, but you know, going down there, I also got a lot of positive energy from the community. Like it's a really exciting environment. You've got, uh, you know, all kinds of like powerful guest speakers were there like Courtney DeWalter and Matt Fraser and Rich Roll, uh, our buddy Chris. Uh, it, it was just something that, that helped to actually put me in, the, in even a better positive mindset. Um, so, and, and yeah, it's all about health. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, like for me, I really, the thing that people might look, I mean, a lot of times I've gone on like the, the like different TV channels around town and like, I mean, if I could give you, like, if I could tell you the number of times someone's made a joke about your knees must be like terrible, it would be like innumerable. Um, but the funny thing is, is I have absolutely zero joint issues. And I mean, I'm grateful for that. You know, it's like I have to protect myself. That could change. Yeah. Um, but you, know, I take care of myself in terms of like listening to my body movement like at least 20 30 minutes a day uh and eating well like those are really important getting sleep is reducing stress um to me it's like you, you know people's quality of life is is so so important like that you can like really impact those things so yeah i try to get people activated to to do i, I ran into this man from ireland actually two was it two days ago uh, up in Washington Courthouse at a 12 hour race, uh, Dennis, and he was joking like that he can't even go back to Ireland now because he gave up eating mi- or eating meat and also Guinness. And he's like, damn it, Harvey, like <laughs> I can't even go back to Ireland now. I tell him, oh, this guy Harvey got me like started uh, eating no meat. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But the yeah. um, if you so you're a teacher. During yeah. the day, your day job. Yeah. When will you retire? Uh, my plan is to uh, teach for at least 35 years. Really? Yeah. And you've been teaching for? For 22 and Another 13. Half. Yeah. That's like the plan. Another, yeah, another 13 years. Why? Well, I mean, I, I like teaching. So, I mean, uh, I, I like interacting with our students. I mean, I have good days and bad days. But, uh, you know, it gives me a lot of drive. I mean, like, even yesterday, I was feeling a little lethargic. I was like unmotivated. I was like trying to get myself to do things. And this morning, like I just wake up. I like don't even think about driving from Columbus, Circleville to Cincinnati. It's about two hours, hour 45 minutes. Got here to my condo, got changed, got ready, ran to school. And it's like I'm ready to go. Boom, boom, boom throughout the day. And it's like I have a like a a a real um, I have a purpose like to go there and to interact with our students and I get positive energy from them and I give energy. So you know I have students who are like, you know, hey Mr. Lewis, how was your weekend? You know, it was really nice. They're very you know. So we have interaction and and that motivates me to to work hard. So uh, yeah, I, I mean. There's other things I would love to do in this world. And, uh, 
you know, one of my dreams would, would be like to, to have like a travel show mm -hmm. and like go to different places on the planet, like share a race like this, share local runners and like the culture or the like location or the adventure. So, I mean, I, that's one dream I would love to have. Um, so but why don't you do it? Well, that's a good question. Like, uh, I, I've just been pretty busy lately. <laughs> So I haven't got. So you must not want to do it. You must That's not want true. to do it that much. Well, not exactly, because I have put out a treatment. And I have talked to a director, and I have, you know, mentioned it to other like individuals. So it's not to say that I, you know, haven't tried. You know, I haven't like totally. I'm just like I'm also busy on on other adventures right now. So Biggs was one. Uh, I'm working on uh, finishing a book for 2024. It's exciting. So I'm really excited about that. You're going to tell us all your of, secrets? I'm going to tell secrets I have not ever shared before. Yeah, so it, it, that's, that's uh, very exciting, and it's also a fun, creative outlet, and it also takes a lot of energy. It's, it's embarking on something as big as the Appalachian Trail, maybe even bigger in terms of like, the amount of energy and time. I mean, I've been doing this for actually years, but this is actually, it's culminating, it's coming. I, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing some light. It's still a ways out, but I'm seeing some light. So you invited me into your classroom because we came down and we were building some content for the fundraiser for Brighton yeah. Center. And um, your students are probably like, who's this old guy standing up front that Mr. Lewis invited in here? And Younger um, man, younger man. <laughs> and... Um, and so they weren't interested in asking me too many questions, but one girl did. Back right corner. She probably sits there all the time. Um, as I'm, I'm comfortable in front of a room and talking mm -hmm. to brand new people, I saw her before she asked the question. You can just tell. There's things about people sometimes. Mm -hmm. And she's the one person that asked a question. You probably don't remember the question because that was a busy, crazy day. Do you? I'm going to... Ah, uh, you have to repeat okay, it. I so might it was, remember a student. I'm going to paraphrase it, I think. But it was pretty much like, hey, when you fail and when things aren't going well, um, what do you do? Because I'm this guy standing up there and I've succeeded at a certain level in business. I don't feel like a success yet, but a lot of other people look at it and they say that. And we do this podcast and you have an idea and you just... And she said, well, what do you do? And that's the second time I had received that question from a high school student in a month hmm. about when you're feeling bad or you're feeling down or you're losing, like, what do you do? And so, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, well, honestly, like, uh, you know, Big's Backyard Ultra is like a culminating moment for me. But uh, I've, I've lost... Uh, scores and scores of races so i mean uh in fact like i was saying back before you know it, it took me 17 years to qualify for boston it like took me uh till 2009 to win my first ultra so like i ran ultras for 13 years before i won uh my first ultra and since then i've been running for about almost 13 a little over 13 years so, I mean, uh, it took me half of the way through that journey before I won a race. And even then, I wasn't winning as many races as I have in like the last four years. So, it's, yeah, it's like I had to fall down so many times and just decide to get up and try it a little differently in order to get to a point where I was able to, you know, reach this experience. You know, so, I mean... I think that failure is part of the route. And if I would have won immediately um, ultras, like from the, the start, I would 100% not appreciate it as much as I do now. Like, I mean, you know, I, I had experience of being the very last person in, in running, the back of the pack to, to being the leader. And as someday I hope to be in the back of the pack again, you know, when I'm, you know, hopefully able to still run like my friend Mike Fremont. It'd be 101.5. Although he's the front of the pack for centenarians, mm -hmm. you know, we finished the Flying Pig 5K. We're going to be in the back of the group, and that's beautiful. So, I mean, it's more about participating in a self-journey and growing uh, yourself. Like, so, 
you know, even if bigs hadn't turned out the way I had visited this year, and like I had been like the first person out, you know, that would have just given me motivation to say, okay, like if I really love this, then I need to reinvent what I'm doing and approach this differently. If I, you know, finished last and I was like, I really didn't enjoy this, well, then I'm maybe going to go take up like, you know, um, wakeboarding or something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So I might take up something different. But, you know, I think that failure is is 100% part of the process of success. And, like, if you have instantaneous success, that's either extremely unusual or, yeah, it's like I don't feel like you can have the same sort of, like, appreciation as having gone through a long journey and it's not a sprint. Like, I mean, that's the thing with, with my journey. It took so long to get there. <laughs> it's if, a long journey. If you have success too quick, the problem is going to be you might actually have a problem because failure is going to come. That's, that's a good point. Right. Yeah. And if you don't learn to deal with the failure, to develop a skill and found it in adversity, man, when that failure comes, it's going to hurt. And so, yeah, it doesn't feel good, but it's sure easier to fail early, right? Yeah. That's what I found. Yeah. It's yeah, easier it's to a, fail early. That's a good point. All my growth's come from it. So, final question. All right. This wasn't, this wasn't just a question. This no. is not a good conversation, but final question. Um, you brought up the people that you went down to the, what was the event in Georgia that you went to? Selma, the Selma. You, you know, so, no, the running one with Jesse and oh, with Jesse. Uh, and Selma. Yeah. What was that? The Running Man. Okay, the Running Man Festival. Yeah. So, you named some significant, I don't know how you put it, significant names or people or yeah. a group of those people. I'm sure that they're winners and champions at the things they do. Mm-hmm. What's inside those people? Oh, that's a great question. I mean, honestly, it's uh, usually like a, a total passion for what they're doing. Uh, as one, a, a, a sort of creative drive to operate different than the norm. So, I mean, you know, uh, we all have to kind of find our own pathway. Like, I'm very unique in the way I approach things. Uh, you know, it, it, it's what works for me is not necessarily going to work for the next person. You know, so it's, it's, I think, finding your own creative pathway. Uh, but just also, all of, all of them are very, like, uh, relentless individuals. So, like, they're very persistent. Uh, they've, they've spent thousands of hours uh, on their craft, whatever that may be. Uh, you know, one thing I do find sometimes with these ultra runners, which... Is different from the group at Running Man because uh, Courtney would fit into that. But um, it, with the, it, a lot of the top ultra runners and, and even a, a lot of the, the ultra runners in the middle of the pack or the back of the pack, um, you know, they, they've gone through some major uh, hardship in life that's kind of uh, also strengthened their mind. So uh, for me, like there's been a long chain of I mean, there's been a, certain events in life that have absolutely shaped you know, who I am today. And had I not like experienced something like breaking my neck in, in 2004, there's no way I would have been able to do this. So it's like uh, those sorts of things can also have an impact on people. Like when you've been down into the dirt and you, you think that there's no possible way of getting up from that but you climb up then you can like uh you know really uh elevate you know uh, yourself uh, yeah where do you find hope in that moment uh like your 2004 car wreck broken where do you find hope because that's what you're talking about you're talking about getting through it yeah well it's just like um well that experience honestly like just getting out of the car was hope (laughs) so then, like, getting out of the car when I thought I was going to die, you know, like, that I felt like that was priceless. 
And then, you know, getting to the hospital and finding out that I broke my neck um, and I had to, then I had to get surgery the next day and I have like titanium and added bone in my neck. So that just being able to walk was priceless. And then after being able to walk for a couple months, being able to like take a few jogging steps and then to be able to like continuously just grind and grow. Like that's, that's where the, you know, the, you just grateful to just be alive. Yeah. So everything beyond that is just like beyond the, the vegan icing on the cake. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get that in there. Oh yeah. Um, hey, so, so two things, man. Thank you for doing this fundraiser. I opened my big mouth. Hey man, that was incredible. This, right? I love it. That was so incredible. Um, so we're in the 40s. We have a goal by the end of November that I want us to get to 75,000. And that's tough. That's another 20 days, right? But I have right. something in the bag. I have somebody, we get to 50 grand. I have somebody that's going to throw in another five. And so I'd love for us to get behind it again and have another big bump because if we can get to 75 by the end of November, I know we can get to 100 grand by December. Yeah. Come Christmas time, I want this to be done. Right. And I think I was texting you and Tracy right. and said, I'm going into hibernation. <laughs> After we run 100 grand, if you all want me to stop talking and don't hang out for a while, just get to 100 grand by December and I'll shut up for maybe, maybe a week. I love it. I love <laughs> um, it. So it's nice and fun to be in the presence of a world champion. Hey, I, Thanks it's, for coming in, dude. It's been a pleasure. It's nice that you came up with this in, inventive and creative way to uh, let us help the community yeah. and also team up yeah. and like push ourselves in new ways. Uh, this is anything, an idea. It's crazy what can come from an idea because yeah. someone's going to have seen what you've done here and they're going to do it next time. Like someone's going to. Yeah. And yeah. then, and so who knows the ideas that it sparks in people and yeah. every thousand yeah. dollars, every five grand raised for the community to give back to folks. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to become a billionaire, but as long as those people recognize where they came from, remember some humanity, and try to really make a difference on some of the people that didn't have the same combination of stuff. And right here, this is Laz. Yeah, what's course. so special about so, this dude as we so wrap Laz, up? So uh, Laz, you know, actually one of his dreams in life is to raise a million dollars for uh, charity. You know, so he has eight races. I think he may have actually... All right, he might have nine with, with the virtual race across. Uh, he started a virtual race during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I think he may have actually hit that number of a million dollars already because of the virtual race that he did mm -hmm. over the pandemic. Like that race like was way more successful than anyone ever dreamed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, he's an artist. What's I mean, special about him? Well, he, there's no one like him on the planet. Um, he, he well, actually, no, didn't, no, yeah, 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 you can tell. <laughs> he, he dreamed up this course, you know, he dreamed up this, this event and he, he dreamed up the Barkley marathons, uh, all these other, like really every one of his races is creative in one way or another. It has some element of like crazy endurance where people think it's just mad and he just captures people's, uh, uh like fascination. So if you get a chance, you can look on YouTube um, the Barkley Marathons, the race that eats its young. It's a free documentary, and it's fantastic. It's like super funny, um, and it it also it really highlights him as a race director. Um, just he looks a, like a mad scientist. Yeah, he's 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 sort of like that. His father was actually a a, a NASA um, physicist mm -hmm. and worked on the propulsion system for the lunar module. So it's like uh, people can judge a book by the cover, but there's a lot more depth there. Yeah, no, there's things going yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is just a way for him to use his creative right. juice, right? And I think he likes to see you all go through pain. Well, you know, he might have a little, like, slight, small side of masochism to him, but <laughs> he, he really actually is more, in, more he is absolutely uh, taken um, by the, 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 unrelenting will to continue like he just he he's fascinated by human endurance and like um you know like in this race 74 runners uh were able to see you know how far you know what 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 was their limit and only one runner 
it did not reach their limit. Just happened to be you. Just happened to be me. Hey, so these shoes like, were wrapping up. So why Newton shoes? I mean, you started oh, yeah. you started you running with them before they sponsored you, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. So I I've loved Newtons. Uh, I've been wearing these for like 13 years. Uh, they're based in like Boulder, Colorado. Uh, they actually have like uh, lugs on the bottom of them, mm-hmm. so you land midsole uh, versus landing on your heel. So it simulates what you would run like if you were actually run barefoot. But they have great, great cushioning. And these shoes here are road shoes that I'm wearing on the trail, but they are super comfortable. So I'm looking at the other runners wearing these rugged trail shoes. Those can be wise if you say like, because sometimes you might kick a rock or like stumble across something. Uh, I've got really good foot placement. So I'm really good about placing my feet Although that fifth day, it didn't seem like that because I managed to fall down a number of times. Um, so it's a special shoe. It, they're really great shoes. Yeah, and I, I love them. Uh, they, they're they also made um, partly from recycled materials. Um, and they last a, a really good amount of time. So, I mean, I typically wear my Newtons for like 400, 450 miles or more, 500 miles. Um, in this race, I actually did change my shoes four times. I had four different shoes shoes I wore. And I wore the, these Gravity uh, for almost all of it. And then I changed into these Newton Distance for like the last two laps. <laughs> you looked like the roadrunner there. Yeah. When you, it looked like you stopped, but you got yeah, one like, dust kicked up. Right. It's right. like, okay, he's still it got it. It was very <laughs> dusty trail. Like, that's it. But um, thanks, man. Last, this man. was great. It was great coming in. Thank Cheers. you.